from Washington, this is VOA News. World financial markets plunge. The U.S. works to defuse tensions with Afghanistan. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. World stock markets plummeted Thursday after U.S. Federal Reserve Chief Ben Bernanke said the central bank may ease efforts to stimulate the country's improving economy. News of a slowdown in China's manufacturing sector also contributed to a down day on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 354 points, 2.3 percent. Earlier Thursday, key Asian exchanges dropped by 2 percent or more, with markets in Paris, Frankfurt, and London all falling 3 percent or more. U.S.-Afghan peace talks with the Taliban are facing some rough going following strong objections from the Afghan government. President Hamid Karzai, disturbed by the opening of a Taliban political office this week in Doha, canceled talks with Washington on a troop pact governing U.S. presence in the country after NATO forces withdraw in 2014. Secretary of State John Kerry spoke with President Karzai to ease his concerns. Preliminary negotiations between the U.S. and the Taliban have been expected to begin Thursday in Doha, Qatar, but now the start date is unclear. The U.N.'s top diplomat in Afghanistan says a smooth transition of political power next year largely depends on well-planned, credible, and timely elections. UN correspondent Margaret Bashir reports. Jan Kubish warned that the coming months are likely to see heavy fighting as Afghan security forces crack down on anti-government elements across the country and insurgents target security personnel and civilians in return. He noted an increase in high-profile attacks and said more than a thousand civilians, many of them children, have been killed since January. Nearly 25 percent more people than were killed in the same period last year. Afghanistan is preparing for elections next April. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations. At least four people were killed in western Iraq Thursday when a suicide bomber blew himself up in a vote-counting center after polls closed in two provinces. The incident occurred in Ramadi in Anbar province, more than 100 kilometers west of Baghdad. No one's claimed responsibility. Voters in Anbar and a second Sunni majority province, Nineveh, cast ballots for local councils. The elections have been postponed for two months because of security concerns. Germany is blocking Turkey's next step towards membership in the European Union over Ankara's crackdown on anti government protests. All 27 EU members must agree whether to move forward on membership talks. Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel calls Turkey's reaction to the protests appalling. The UN High Commissioner for Refugees says the plight of millions of refugees and displaced people in Africa is being overshadowed by the crisis in Syria. To mark World Refugee Day, the UNHCR appealed to the international community to remember that Africans who are forcibly displaced by conflict are also in need of support. Here's UNHCR spokesman Adrian Edwards. You have, just in the last year, some very serious refugee crises, some new ones, and some continuing ones in Africa. You have the Mali situation. You have big crises in Central African Republic. Uh, now we're seeing recent uh, displacement across borders from northeast Nigeria. Um, we've had we continue to have Africa's world war, the situation in Democratic Republic of Congo. More than a quarter of a million people were voluntarily repatriated to their homes of origin in Angola, Burundi, Ivory Coast, the DRC, and Liberia. The International Olympic Committee says it is fully supportive of peaceful protest in Brazil and is confident the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro will bring major benefits. Anti-government protests have spread across Brazil in the past week. Demonstrators are angry over what it believes as the government's neglect of public services and rampant corruption. 
Rescue workers in India's northern Uttarakhand state are trying to reach tens of thousands of people stranded due to landslides and flash floods. At least 150 are dead. Engineer Pisricha has details. After bridges were washed away and roads blocked by landslides and flash floods in Uttarakhand, Air Force helicopters flew to settlements tucked in the high mountains to evacuate people. But the operations were intermittently hampered by bad weather on Thursday. The scale of the devastation in Uttarakhand has unfolded slowly after unprecedented heavy rains battered the state, cutting off communication links with many areas. The state's chief minister has called it a Himalayan tsunami and fears casualties could be very heavy. Anjana Pasricha for VOA News, New Delhi. And I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.